think it's a, I had a very quick look through. It really represents CERN underground and above ground, with one exception. The office space you are seeing there is much too large for a single person. <laughs> we have more people inside the office, but here you had to clear it a little bit in order to let the people in. I know that. Okay. So, what, what will this exhibition help? I, I think it will fascinate people, it will give them a glimpse of what we are doing, how we are doing it, what is the spirit of CERN, and what's the spirit of the people working there. And it's not only the scientists, it's also the engineers and the technicians, which one should not forget. They are all working in the same spirit towards getting more knowledge and also to transmit that knowledge to the general public. And there was this question about um, why is it now so fashionable to talk about CERN, to talk about the LHC, about fundamental physics. I think the interest in, this, in society was always there. I think we just, we scientists made the mistake not to satisfy it. We have realized that there is a tremendous amount of interest in, in society and that we can satisfy it by talking to people, by making ex exhibitions, by making tours at CERN, etc., etc. The most we have to offer is to scientists. I mean, you have to imagine these experiments, uh, you will see some, some parts of it in the exhibition. These experiments are global endeavors. So, one of the bigger, each of the big experiments consists out of roughly 3,000 or more than 3,000 scientists and engineers. Now, 3,000 scientists from around 200 institutions all around the world. You have to imagine, you have 200, 300 professors. That means you have 200, 300 egos. Okay? <laughs> And, okay, you have to slightly direct these egos a little bit so that they don't diverge, that they can converge. And it's relatively easy, Jim, to some extent at least. It's easy to, to converge them because they all have one thing in mind. We want to gain some more knowledge about uh, the microcosm and about the early universe, how everything began and how everything developed. And I think this also, coming back to, general, to the general public, that also fascinates everybody. Everybody wants at least, uh, consciously or, or, non, or unconsciously, want to know how everything started. And that's what we are doing. And it goes far beyond uh, the discovery of the, of the Higgs boson, which is just one major milestone in our knowledge about the early universe. I mean, it's, it, it was the last missing build, uh, building block of the standard model. But we are still, as Peter pointed out, we, are still, no, we have still no clue or the dark universes, and 95% of the universe is dark. I mean, 50, it took us nearly 50 years to complete the standard model, our knowledge about the visible universe. 95% are still unknown. It's high time that we enter the dark universe, and this is our hope that we find some traces of, of dark matter particles, for example, when we switch on the machine again in 2015. So, <clears throat> have fun in the, uh, in the exhibition, I can tell you it's very nice, but the real thing is still in Geneva. <laughs> okay, thank you.